In this video, I got 5 developers from my Discord server to create some simple effects like the ones you would see in my underrated effects series. Which one will make the best effect? Well you guys will be the decider of that, so stick around to see all of the effects and leave your favorite one down in the comments. This first effect made for this video is coming from Icon in the Discord server. But before I actually get into what we have here, keep in mind all of these systems code and how clean the code is in the organization of the project and also how satisfying the effect is because that's how mainly you should be judging each effect. Now, before I actually get into the code and everything, let's take a look to see what we have here. So first thing I notice is the mouse cursor has a little constellation or mm. particle effect onto it. So that is pretty cool. But also what he has here for us is an effect when we jump, there is mm. a landing impact just like that. So that looks very cool. So now let's take a look at the code. Don't believe there's anything in workspace other than base plate. So that's fine. Let's take a look at replicated storage. We have a assets folder with the shockwave part so that's organized well here we have the two modules for constellation and landing effect let's take a look at constellation here we have some settings or configuration so very customizable very simple to use module with constellation.new and also some simple functions like we can see here also is the spawning update draw connections, create line, update mouse positions. Here we are using tick for last update and start. We're also using heartbeat. Here is stop, destroy, and then set configuration. So pretty lengthy module, pretty cool. Let's take a look at the landing effect module. So here we have some default configuration. So it is customizable. That is good to know also simple to use with the object oriented programming approach with landing effect dot new so that is simple create landing debris so we have the functions are organized well we're using a little bit of ray casting looping through the part count making a part and then tweening it out with random with a random c-frame so that is cool on landing set up listeners and then destroy so pretty cool Pretty cool effect we have here with the modules and I believe he might have more. Okay, there's an empty screen GUI and then here we have two init scripts and starter player scripts. So this is for the landing effect and this other one is for the constellation. So constellation, very simple to use and send in the configuration. And then this other script here, when the character is added, we're checking if there's a landing effect and if there is, we're going to destroy it and create a new one. So that is cool. And so yeah, here all together is our first effect here made by Icon. Okay guys, so the next effect we have here is coming from Dark Gamer on Discord. And here we have a Orbit Lattice module. And so here it is. There's the star I can see. He has a lot of things commented. I can see, hello Stewie, thanks for the chance to be in one of your videos. For you, I've designed effect, which I named Orb Lattice. And here he left us three different configurations, which is very cool, and a code example. And he also explained the methods. So that is very cool. Here we have a lot of types, so heavily type checked. Here we have some settings, use spatial hash connection, refresh rate, and then again, like you said in the comments, object-oriented programming, simple to use with orblattice.new, the origin configuration. And then we create the nodes for the lattice. So creating a part in a model, then figuring out the offsets for that, setting the position, and then create connections, which is pretty interesting. I think, how is he making the connections? Okay, okay, I see, I see. The beams he's using for the connections and then the main parts up here are the other parts and it uses the beams to connect them. So that is cool. Here is the create connection beams. Calculate node positions, update connections, refresh connections, add new connections, create single connection, start, pause, resume, destroy, get stats, and then update configuration. So very long module with lots of stuff in it. 
So now let's head back up and take a look at the code samples he has and also the uh, configuration. So we're going to open up a local script here and just take what he has here and then just replace this with orbit lattice. There's our one, our default, I'm assuming default configuration and then create a new effect. So when we go ahead and play test the game, we can see we have some nodes that are connected by beams, which looks very, very cool. So now we can go ahead and play around with some of the configurations he has in the script. So config one, let's go ahead and put that in here. So this one makes the nodes connected a lot more, it seems like. Let's go ahead and put in the second one. Where it reduces the node count, but still looks very cool. And then finally, we have the third configuration, which takes up the node count to 500 and changes a few other things. And as we can see here, that is very, very cool. And just going back to the methods he has here, I was looking through these again, and it's also cool that he added one to update the configuration during runtime. But one that kind of stuck out to me is get stats, which returns some stats for monitoring. And so in this local script, I made it so it would print the stats that we get from this effect just to see what it would give us. So we're going to play test, go to the output. And here we have a table that has active connections, connection density, frame count, node count, spatial hash, cells, and then total connections. So that's a cool feature out on top of this. Get stats. That is very cool. And overall, very cool system. Very cool effect we have here. Okay, so this next effect is coming from Ocean, and here we have a simple effect folder, and we have two things to ungroup. So uh, put this in starter GUI, and then put this in replicated storage, and we can delete those. Now, I'm not too sure how this works. Oh, he already has a script in here. Okay, so we are going to play test the game just to see what it does already. And there is a 10 second wait on here, so it might take a little bit, but we will see. And hopefully there isn't anything. Oh, okay. There is. Oh, okay. It's just the naming. And I think now it is good to go. Oh, there we go. All right. So that's pretty cool. It's like an effect when you have low health, which actually is very nice. And then, oh, was there an error? Okay. So one more thing that we got here, attempt to index no with background transparency. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's just trying to get a f the, the frame, but we do not have the frame and stop. So that would be an easy fix to just copy the frame, put it in here, and then send the frame in to stop. And that's how you would fix that. But that's not too big of a deal. Now you already got a sneak peek of the module, but here we have quite a few settings we can mess around with here. And also it's very simple with the start and stop function. Here we are setting the connection to run service that render steps. And you're using sine waves for that, which is very cool. Using tick times pull speed, setting blur size, Field of view and then background transparency and then to stop the effect we just disconnect it set it to nil good practice here and then reset everything which is very nice very simple but it also looks very nice so here i will go back and play test it again Okay guys, so the fourth effect made for this video was made by Cash, yes, Cash the King, the YouTuber, Cash the King on Discord, and what he has for us is, looks to be 
octopus arms. So here we have some arms that are following our character around with some cool movement effects when we move our character. So that is cool. And then we click to make them activate. So then we can pick up an apple. We can also drop it and same thing for all of these other items. And I believe we can pick up multiple items at once, which there we go. Very smooth animations and everything works like it's supposed to. Don't believe there's any errors except for that. But overall, very, very cool. Let's take a look at the code and workspace. Replicate first. Those are just assets that he used for here. Models, octopus arm, and then that's all there is really for assets. I'm not going to open up anything that's not really especially made for this. So in controllers, there's the octopus controller. Input, we are using input context, input action, and we have the in two input bindings here. Don't believe we need to open up anything else here. So we have those. And then if we go to the server script, we have services and then octopus service and then our server storage and then initialize client. So opening up the octopus controller module, which is client sided, we can see we have a function here for when the character is added. And so here we're using Trove. So very nice organization. And we're checking to see here if we have a remote. And so we add uh, the click input action dot pressed and release to trove and also when those happen are a function and uh, send a remote over to the server i'm not for sure what this boolean is i'll have to take a look at it but here is octopus controller and then octopus service which is the server sided one here we have some types the arm offsets here we have a function for setting up the octopus arm here we can see C frame stuff, pivoting, creating motor 6Ds, IK control, have an update function. Here's our remote event that we pick up on, which is triggered. So it is the toggle. So true or false is to trigger the arms. So, and then easily you can call toggle arms to trigger that. So that is very cool, very clean. And then here is the on player added setup here very organized with the use of trove and it's a very cool effect very nice well done cash okay guys so the last effect i have for this video is coming in made by exile i'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. i'm sorry if i said it wrong but exile dev on discord and what he has for us is a impact death screen so when we go into the game and reset our character as you can see we have this little screen we cannot move our character that looks like this and we can press e to revive and then we are back to normal just like that so we have two scripts here i believe that's all there is with, uh, along with the screen gui with two remote events so let's take a look at the client one we're using context action service i can see tweening set up highlight function for the character and then we're binding the action revive so when when we need to revive then we're going to send the load character remote event tween the lighting tint color destroy the highlight and set the variable die equal to false if we come down here when the humanoid when we detect the humanoid does die then we set up a highlight freeze the character tween the tint color and then make everything enabled, die equal to true, and enable the screen GUI. Take a look at the server. And here on the server, we have the code to set up the two remote events. So load character on service event, server event, sorry. We call load character sync on the player. And then for freeze character, the simple classic way to do it, loop through every base part in the character and set the anchored property to true so very cool simple it is very clean well done by exile and here it is once again and yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button 
Make sure to leave your favorite effect down in the comments below and have a great day and peace.